That is America to me. Welcome everybody. Welcome everybody. That was uh, that was a beautiful video that uh, our advisory board chair uh, produced with some great folks out of uh, New York, and uh, really beautiful. Um, I'm sure we could put a link in the chat if we uh, if we thought about it. Um, speaking of chat, um, if you're new to Zoom. Uh, this is a good time to figure out that at the bottom of your screen, there's a chat icon. If you click on that, uh, that'll bring up a little window. And you can see all the things that will get typed in the, in the chat bar. And you can also ask questions. So there's going to be a Q&A at the end. Jason will be uh, answering some of the questions that uh, come up. Welcome, everybody. I see there's almost 200 people on the call already. Um, but uh, just, yeah, just put your... Put all caps ASK, that'll help uh, the people that are fielding the questions and getting them to me that I can ask Jason, that'll help them identify those. So just say ASK in all caps and then your question after that, and that'll be super. So uh, without further ado, I, saw I think we're three minutes in already, so we might as well yeah, introduce really the founder of Field Team 6, Jason Berlin. Jason. Hello, everybody. Bravo. Oh my God, thank you all for being here. A huge crowd, almost 200 so far. Um, I uh, elevated my computer to reduce my chins. I think we're, we're good. Um, so um, I am Jason Berlin with Field Team Six. Thank you for coming to this, our second official strategy briefing and the final one we're going to have before the most important election of our lives in 42 days. So we're all here because registering new Democrats in the places we need them most, those swing states, and signing them up to vote by mail are the, the most crucially important things we can be doing. It's the number one most effective way to swing states, to defeat Trump and the GOP who enable him, and to save our experiment in democracy. Um, one thing that's super inspiring uh, to me is that there, there are studies that show that when someone votes in two elections in a row, they become a lifelong voter. So many people voted in the midterms. So many young people, so many people of color, so many women, um, especially young people, many of them for the first time. Uh, this will be their second election. So the way I'm thinking about this biggest political reawakening in modern history is that it, big picture, it's not just this election. We could be sitting on a movement. And uh, that's how we have to keep on thinking about it and keep on nourishing it so that we, we're in this for the long haul and we can make some real structural change over time. Um, what, what Field Team 6 leaves in its wake as opposed to um, you know, campaigns who can you know, put money into ads, what we leave in our wake are lifelong Democratic voters. So we create the infrastructure that creates infrastructure. Um, how we got started, many of you know this, so I'll, I'll be quick about this part. Um, I, you know, I was a TV writer for 18 years in uh, comedy and reality, and um, then Trump got elected, and it changed my life. I needed to do something different. So I quit my job, threw myself into volunteering with Swing Left for a year, then with the California Democratic Party for the next year leading up to the midterms and with the volunteer army that we rallied, which was 70 to 100% women, depending on the day, uh, we were able to register over 6,000 progressive voters 
in the five swing districts of Southern California and help do our part to flip them all in the midterms, including all of Orange County, as well as CA25. So that was the proudest work I'd ever been a part of. That's why I founded Field Team 6 just after the midterms so we could keep on going and do this on a national level, see what kind of good trouble we could get into. Um, since then, we've registered just over 23,000 progressive voters across the, our, our target states. We have 12 battleground states. Um, I can drop them in the chat right now. And here they are. Oh, there we go. And, um, and we are on our way to, uh, to 50,000 voters by November. Um, and we're also raising the $500,000 or so it will take to get there with all our combined outreach efforts. So what makes Field Team 6 different than all other voter registration organizations is we are proudly, cheerfully, respectfully partisan. Um, Register Democrats Save the World is our stated mission. And by, by that we mean all our volunteers are, are part of this for sure. And the people who are really saving the world are the voters that we register, who are about 75% women, young people, and people of color. We're super proud of that, and that's a, a core part of, of our DNA. Um, other ways that, that Field Team 6 is different. We, um, because we are partisan, we can not only um, register Democrats and tell them where to vote and when to vote, we can tell them who to vote for. So we can spread the word about candidates. We're also our only, the only voter partisan voter reg organization with our own app, our own voter registration portal, the Voterizer, super proud of, rolled that out on uh, August 22nd, a month ago. Uh, and since then, we've been, we've been using it to mint new Democrats. Another thing about Field Team 6 is that unlike campaigns in the party, we don't close up and go home after an election. We keep going. We keep registering Democrats all year, every year. There are no more off years. This should be something that is just a, a, a normal part of what we're always doing and uh, empowering people, turning their voices into votes. So that's who we are, how we got here. Um, since COVID, we've become all digital. We adapted to, to thrive in this new crazy world by becoming all digital. So what we're doing now is outreach through phone banks, text banks, emails, and targeted social media ads. Um, we have multiple phone banks going every day of the week into our 12 target states. We have uh, text banks every weekend, sometimes during the week, and we are, um, the money we've raised, a large uh, percentage of it is going into these text banks because it's a super effective way to do voter outreach and we are leaving it all on the field. We, um, the money we have raised for our field program, you know, we, we raised enough money to, uh, to survive just for a little bit after the election, make sure we, we stick around forever because we're an evergreen organization, but, um, but it's all, all the rest of it is going straight into the field for voter contact and just registering as many Dems as we can in the next 42 days. Uh, the, our text banks, so far we've sent over 1.5 million texts into our 11 states. Super proud of that. Our response rate for those texts, normal response rate, is about 5 to 10%. We're getting about a 14% response rate. That's great. Um, we, uh, we've also started doing text arcades. That's a new idea that I'm super excited about. This is, uh, the problem has, has long been that demand for texting by volunteers far outstrips supply because it's an expensive thing to do. So the idea with text arcades is that we're still using all the money we were going to to pay for free texting opportunities for our volunteers. But that will only get us, us a certain way down our lists and to get further down, anyone who can uh, show up at a text arcade can pay $10 to get a digital token that unlocks 500 contacts that they can then text. So this is putting the means of production in the hands of the proletariat, you know? Allowing, allowing volunteers to go as far as they can and for us all to get more voter, you know, maximize our voter outreach. Super excited about that. Um, 
as far as emails, we've sent out 500,000 so far. And uh, with our social media ads that are targeted specifically towards the people on our lists, we know they're seeing them because we're hearing from people. As we reach out to them on phones and by text, they're saying, oh, I saw an ad for you guys. I saw an ad for the Voterizer. So they're working and every little touch helps get people to register. It takes an average of five to seven touches, depending on what study you read, to get someone to actually register. So it, it all helps. Um, we are currently, uh, who, so who we're reaching out to? I want to talk about that for a second. We have two lists right now. We are uh, researching a third one in the case that we get through these two lists fully with two passes. Uh, and by a, a pass, I mean a full treatment as in we reach out <clears throat> to everyone on that list with uh, multiple emails, a text, uh, and a social media ad as well as, you know, when we'll hit some of them with phones as well. Um, our first list is 2.4 million public college students. Super important list. The you know, uh, uh, young people um, will make up over a third of the electorate on November 3rd. Um, so super important. Um, and the other list is 6.3 million purged voters. Voters who have dropped, who have been dropped from the voter rolls in our target states. And just a sentence or two about purged. Uh, most people think of the flashy purges, like when Wisconsin or Georgia, uh, you know, in the last little while has said, hey, uh, we just decided we're going to take 239,000 people off the rolls. And you hear about that in the news and it gets litigated or not. Um, and those are, those are nefarious and those are the ones you hear about. Even more nefarious are the laws that are put in place, the quiet, boring, bureaucratic laws that add a step to the voter registration process, or that add you now have to send in a photo of your ID the first time you register. It's death by a thousand cuts, and uh, those little things, um, it make the, either they make it harder to register, or they may say after two elections, if you don't vote, you get dropped from the rolls. Um, if there's a tiny mismatch in your in your, your name in two different places, you put the middle initial in one, you may get dropped. That is, is, is the majority of why people get dropped. And um, so these, the purge list allows us to fight that as well. Um, super important. Um, we are also looking for a, a third actionable list right now in the case we, we get through these two. At this point, we've contacted about 40% of our two lists, so the purge list and the um, student list. And we currently have enough money to get through our first full texting pass of both of these lists in order to do the rest of the treatment, which is not just texting, it's also social media ads and emails um, and phone calls. Uh, we will we'll have to raise 150000 more to complete the first pass. Um, another 150000 will allow us to complete an entire second pass on both lists and 200,000 will allow us to purchase a new list and do a full voter contact program on that list. So it's a 500,000 total uh, you know, budget that we are trying to raise in these last 42 days. Fortunately, it's not all or nothing. If we get there, great. If we don't, we'll use whatever we have to register as many people as we can. Deep breath. Man, I talk a lot. Oh, I think that was one sentence. <laughs> All right, so I have some some new milestones that, that we recently hit that I'm super proud of. And um, and we have to uh, just take stock of all, all of these. These are new weapons in our arsenal. So first one is the Voterizer. This is our very own voter registration app, custom built to register Democrats and sign them up to vote by mail. And because we are partisan, we can do voter registration unshackled, uh, which means we can, we can tell our voters not only where and when to vote, but who to vote for. Um, and, oh, oh, what? Oh, hang on. Sonny, so nice to hear from you. 
Wait, wait, slow down. What are you worried about? Voterizer. What is that? Registration portal. Hmm. Is only for Democrats? Is trending on Twitter. Huh. All right. How about this? How about you pull U.S. out of NATO, and we'll see about this voterizer. <laughs> yes, deal. You lose election, you come live here, like Snowden. We love Americans. You are a very tough negotiator, Mr. President, and very good-looking. Mm. <laughs> I'm so proud of that, that footage that our spies captured outside Moscow. Um, I, I also like the, uh, I like the bad electronic music in the background. It's a nice touch. Just gives it that real realism. Uh, so that's Voterizer. <laughs> that's an ad we did for Voterizer. Um, it is a, we built it to be a super easy and fast way to register that cuts through the mountains of regulations that vary widely from state to state and just get you exactly to where you need to go in the shortest distance possible. Um, we also push voting by mail and um, nobody panic. We are also, we're giving everyone guidance in these insane turbulent times. Um, you know, we are, we are nimble enough to change as fast as the world is changing. So we are sending everyone who registers uh, follow-up emails that are saying, you know, best is to get an absentee ballot, but bring it in in person. Uh, you know, either drop it off at a, at a ballot drop box, if that's available in your state, or go to an early voting center. Um, and next best, mail it in, but no later than October 20th. So there's two full weeks to get it in. After that, mask up, drop it off at a polling center. Um, just to answer questions I know you'll have. Uh, Voterizer, it, is, uh, it registers you in, in two to three minutes. Um, it is now available in Spanish for 16 states and counting, all our 12 battleground states and more. Um, one thing that Voterizer does that no other app does is use, it uses three month old technology to confirm everyone's registration who interacts with it against a 50 state database. So we can actually see whether within a, you know, a week to a month, depending on how frequently the states update their systems, we can see that you are registered to vote and or registered to vote by mail so we can follow up with targeted reminders. Um, we have automated helpful voting reminders that you know uh, are customized per state uh, that you get sent if you register through Voterizer. Voterizer is also embeddable if, some, if you want to embed it in your website. You can now do that. It's also co-brandable. So if uh, any allied organization wants their own version of Voterizer, uh, you can have it. You can have your logo on it, click through to your site, and we also give you a code so that you get access to the information of any voter you register with it. Meaning that in addition to our GOTV emails, you can send out your own micro-targeted GOTV emails to these people. And Speak, speak, speaking of, uh, so we, we refer to it as an app, Jason, but it's really a web app. It's a web link. So if you're looking on the Apple or Google store to download an app, it's not that kind of app. It's just a link. So you can go to voterizer.org to see it. And if you want to just run through it for fun, go to test.voterizer.org. And that way your data won't mess up the real data that we're tracking as we register people out there. That's right. And it should be a web app because it, you know, it's easier for everyone to use it loads fast and that's you know that's that's part of the beauty of it and i'll be right back after this commercial break sadness fatigue trouble sleeping a loss of interest in the things you once enjoyed these are just some of the symptoms of ccd chronic constitutional depression it's a condition that arises when the fundamental principles of decency, fairness, and justice underpinning your democracy come under attack. For millions of Americans, these symptoms worsened considerably on November 8, 2016. 
particularly at risk are children, the elderly, and men and women possessing a strong moral compass. CCD is exacerbated by constant voter suppression and can become life-threatening. Fortunately, there's help. Voterizer. This 100% natural solution comes in an easy to use web app that will help you register to vote in whichever state you live, overcoming the often arcane and vote suppressing registration procedures commonly associated with CCD. Created right here on US soil by the scientists at Field Team 6, Voterizer stimulates your sense of purpose, restores your political voice, and reconnects you with millions of Americans who share your passion for democracy. Tell your doctor right away if you're pregnant or nursing. It makes no difference to Voterizer, but they'd probably like to know. Symptoms of Voterizer do not include insomnia, loss of appetite, nausea, headaches, muscle spasms, physical dependency, or the risk of overdose. Voterizer can lead to greater sense of social responsibility and participation in democracy, increased feelings of well-being, hopefulness, and positivity about the future of America. So we are up to 31 videos so far. That is something unique to Field Team 6 we're super proud of. And all are part of raising awareness of voter registration as the best way to, to save our democracy. Huge shout out to Jeff Seeloff, who is rolling videos right now. You can see him in his little box. He is, being, he is the leader of our, our crazy talented media team. And uh, he's, he's done the impossible with no budget at all. <laughs> it's amazing, it really. Uh, he, he uh, astounds us all. Uh, also, thank you to our amazing COO, Dale, for bringing his years of TV production experience to bear. Um, it, it could not be more useful in these crazy times. And you can see all our videos on our YouTube channel and spread them around. Um, that all helps. We'll drop that link in the chat right now. Uh, next thing, tweet storms. We have, under uh, the direction of one of the members of our steering committee, uh, the incredibly brilliant Patty Crane, we have become very good at, at tweet storms. Our first one was the Voterizer launch uh, one month ago, uh, which garnered, don't you get to say garner often, it garnered 25 million impressions and got a reach of almost 8 million, which means um, it, it, uh, we can confirm that almost 8 million people actually saw it. Um, that was followed by a state specific registration deadline storms. We did them in Arizona and Michigan and uh, those got five and a half million impressions and a reach of 1.3 million. Um, a Spanish a launch, uh, sorry, a, a tweet storm launching the Spanish language version of Voterizer uh, is in the works right now. Um, also, it's today, it's as we planned, speak, it's, it's being planned right now. Okay, okay. <laughs> Not in the works. Well, it, planned, and then it's in the works. We, we got to be careful of the words because there actually is a tweet storm in the works right now. It's happening right now. As we speak, that's right. Happy National Voter Registration Day, everybody. Um, it's it's like my personal Yom Kippur, but happy. Um, we have an existing. In, in, <laughs> an existing tweet storm that you can join after this call. Not right now, don't be distracted. After though, we've been doing it all day and, um, and can someone please drop that link in the chat? It's in the chat. Wonderful, thank you. And there's another tweet storm coming up, um, our biggest ever that I will tell you about in a second. But first, um, the next milestone I want to crow about is uh, we were able to get Voterizer involved in a Shepherd Ferry poster campaign. And posters went up over the last few weeks in New York, LA, San Francisco, and Chicago to begin with the opening weekend. And then were rolled out in Georgia and Florida. Uh, and I'm going to share my screen so I can show you what it looks like. Enough noise and lies, give me some truth. That's the first frame. And then here you can see, nice and blurry shot, sorry about that. But how it looks, um, they're being rolled out like this. And that QR code uh, takes you to, you see voterizer.org is 
listed in blurry letters as the first one there. Um, the continuation of this poster campaign uh, will be this poster, which takes you right to Voterizer specifically. And this is also, this is gonna be focused mainly on Florida, a state whose 29 electoral votes could be the entire difference. If we win Florida, lights out, say goodnight. We're good. Um, so that, that's, a, that's a poster campaign that's going on right now. Um, celebrity shout outs have contributed to, to, to spreading the word. We've had celebrity shout outs in the past few months from Jack Black, Sarah Cooper, Jane Lynch, Tom Bergeron, Tanya Hart, Kelly O'Coin, John Hansen, Chris Mann, Nigel Lithgow, Laura San Giacomo, and Reno Wilson. And so many Tony winners from our Ballots Over Broadway event that by the time I got done reading them, it would be election day. So thank you to every one of them for helping get the word out. And now, here's the plan. Okay, for the next 42 days, this is how we see it. From today till October 4th, crank it out, grind it out, way out. That's what we're going to do. We have a tweet storm going during a strategy briefing. There's no stopping. <laughs> we're going all day, all night. Um, October 4th is important because that is the day voter registration deadlines start hitting. And they cascade throughout the month up to um, Colorado's October 27th. So what we're going to do is keep going. That entire month, you know, the first uh, deadline hits in Michigan. Um, we, we move to the remaining 11 states and then 10, 9, 8, you know, until we're all concentrated in the last few states over that last week. Um, that's how we register every last Democrat we possibly can until the timers, timer goes off. Um, from October 27th to November 3rd, we will be doing voter outreach to our lists in all the states that have same day registration. So we won't know if, you know, what, we won't have any way of measuring our results. That doesn't matter. What matters is that people vote and that we win this thing. So um, we'll be calling them, letting them know all is not lost. They can still get registered on the day of the election and they need to. On the day of the election, we are uh, teaming up with Vote Tripling to, uh, to, to do this program where, um, you know, our volunteers in a, uh, you know, mask up. And these are volunteers who are not in a, a vulnerable population, but anyone who wants to and is in a target state can mask up, go to the polls and um, ask people to, who are in line to text three of their friends and get them to vote. And you can do this in a partisan way with a partisan shirt and 100 feet or more from the election place, you can do it in a nonpartisan way and just go to um, democratic areas in democratic cities and ask everyone to, everyone who's wearing a mask um, to send texts to three of their friends and get them to vote right now. After the election from, from November 4th, the day after, until the moment the election is called, we have this massive tweet storm in the works, the one I just mentioned. It is a, we don't know what the hashtag will be quite yet, but it, it'll be something to the effect of count every vote. And it'll be the biggest online effort that, that we can form with all our allies to get the word out and, and make sure that, that every vote is counted. Um, in addition to that, we're gonna do phone and possibly text banks if we can afford it at the time to contact every voter we registered through Voterizer, make sure they're tracking their ballots so they can see that they have been counted. And if there's any problem with them, they find out. And in states where you can cure your ballot, you know, correct your signature if that's, if it's illegible, um, they're doing that. We will also be uh, offering opportunities to join with our partners in swing states to do ballot chase um, for people we, you know, more than the people we registered using Voterizer. And we'll push out any information we have about uh, massive peaceful protests and marches in a socially distanced way. 
that we can take part in on the streets because that could become important. When the election is finally called, um, we will uh, fall asleep immediately while screaming for joy. Uh, you'll fall asleep, we'll all fall asleep while screaming for joy. It will be weird, we'll sleep for about a month. Um, so, mm, who we're doing this with? We're only as strong as our friends. Fortunately, we have the best friends in the world. We have uh, formed partnerships in, in, in which we're, we're uh, voter outreach partnerships, field partnerships um, with Grassroots Democrats HQ, which is just a voter contact powerhouse with Women's March Action, with Do the Most Good, with Higher Heights uh, for America, an amazing organization working on building political power for black women from the voting booth to elected office, with Next Steps Florida, with Arizona Wins, East Valley Indivisibles, University of Michigan Students for Biden, DMV Students for Biden-Harris. Um, we're also partner, partners with over 100 organizations. Incredibly proud of that. And I'm going to share my screen for a second to show you the list of all our partners covering so many states um, and working on, on more partnerships all the time because we are uh, a small part of a huge network of heroes. And uh, this is this, this, this is just a, our list of partners uh, is just a small part of the entire resistance um, that is literally saving the world right now. So yes, we can't do any of this without you. So I wanna thank uh, all of our digital field directors, everyone on our volunteer steering committee, every single volunteer who attends even one event, um, every single thing you do helps. And also huge thanks to the 135 people on our volunteer staff doing everything from outreach to graphic design to wrangling events like this. Thank you, Kala and Michelle. Um, it's, uh, we couldn't do it without every single one of you here. So yeah, now I'm gonna open it up to Q and A. Oh, well, <clears throat> I don't think we have oh, any questions oh, tonight. Oh, there's no questions. I talked for no, too there's long. Really, there's really no, I'm kidding. It, there's lots of questions. <laughs> um, all right, so let's see here. There's so many questions that I can't even scroll back. Um, I'm gonna take these sort of out of order. Mary has a lot of questions, some of which I have answered in the chat. Um, Mary is hilarious. She's great. Um, so uh, our, here's one from Fandra Chang. Are drop boxes uh, available in all states? They are not, um, which complicates things. Um, that's why, that's part of why we're here. We do um, all the work on the uh, on our end um, to make it easy for voters. So um, if uh, you know, where, wherever they register in through Voterizer, they will get follow up emails explaining exactly what the best steps are for voting. You know, if there are ballot drop boxes in their state, how to find them, and uh, just just going through all the all the detail so that you don't have to. Some states, they even vary county to county whether there are ballot drop boxes. Great, uh, here's, here's a question from Nora. Um, Nora, Nora uh, says, uh, you say you have the lists, but then mention money. How is texting costing money if it's on our own phones? Okay, yeah, good question. Um, it's actually not on your phones. Um, it's through a, a central service that we use and every text costs um, uh, 0.75 cents, a little less than a penny. And uh, you send an average of 2.7 texts uh, per contact because there's sometimes you have a conversation and texts go back and forth. So yeah, the money that we're raising pays for the actual texting service the data, the lists that we have, it helps pay off those lists. Um, and uh, 
yeah, that that's really that's that's where that money's going. Amy yeah. asks, uh, "How's the data from Voterizer? Is it working?" Oh, the data from Voterizer, it is working. It's working. Um, we're we've registered um, according to our digital organizing director, including you know. Uh, people we've registered from scratch and people we've registered to vote by mail. Um, she says we've registered 3,000 in this last month. That's a good start. And, uh, and we're looking to ramp up as fast as we can, you know, um, and leave it all on the field. Speaking of ramping up, um, RO asks, are there plans to have text banks every day? I've noticed fellow volunteers looking for daily text texting specific opportunities. Mm, yeah, no, we would love that. We would love to uh, just, you know, have have 24 hour text banks all day, every day. Um, it's a matter of, uh, of, of having support staff to help people during the, the texting process. So that that limits it a little more. And it's also a matter of, um, of, of budget, you know, with infinite budget, we could buy enough lists that we we would have the data to support more texting. Um, as it is, we have a text bank every Friday, every Saturday, every Sunday, and um, opportunities for uh, text arcades. We have three spots for those uh, uh, every weekend, and we're seeing whether we can add three or more spots during the week. Um, we're working on expanding it to the absolute full extent our budget will allow. Speaking, speaking of Mary and speaking of arcades, uh, this was not a question, but it was a comment from Mary. She says, I'm a member of the Text Arcade Club as well as of Texters Anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she is uh, insane with the texts. She's contacted whole states herself. She doesn't <laughs> stop. Mary recently, um, became polygamous, right? She had a, an exclusive relationship with one state. I forget which one, but recently she's been cheating with, I think, Pennsylvania and Wisconsin. Here's a question from Ashley. Is there any plan to collaborate with Bloomberg's effort in Florida to register former felons? Mm, we would love that. I just, the news broke this uh, just a couple hours ago, right? Um, yeah, he's, he's um, doing that through the um, FRRC, the Florida Rights Restoration Coalition, which is a terrific organization that is black run. And, um, and that's very important because as Andrew Gillum told us, um, the problem with just re-registering every felon in Florida is a large percentage of them are white power people who you might not want to just register a ton of. So, uh, so it's really good that it's going through the FRRC. And uh, that's, 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 they're doing that. Any way we could collaborate would be wonderful. Um, but I think that's their, you know, purview. That's what they're doing with that money. Gary asks, when are the registration deadlines for the 12 swing states? Mm. I can, man, if I could just reel them off, that would be amazing. I do have a document. I could a Google Doc I put together that I could drop in the chat afterwards because I don't have it right here. Take a second. But you can give us the overall, right? Oh yeah, it starts October fourth, um, and um, and ends October twenty seventh. So there are cascading deadlines through the the whole month. Um, Robert asks, uh, any data on whether texting or phoning is more effective? Um, that is a good question. I am going to put the link for this because I found it because I can't help myself in the chat for all the registration deadlines. Um, here it is. Satisfying. Uh, also on our website. Texting. Cool. Phoning versus texting. Uh, texting is like the, the, you know, crickets reproductive strategy where you just have 1 million eggs and a lot survive. Uh, but percentage wise, not that many. Um, you can send out a ton of texts in a very short time. Phone banking is more time intensive. Um, however, the 
contacts you, you make since they are, you know, voice to voice, it's the closest we can get right now to face to face. Uh, they're more effective. So they have, a, they're about four times as effective as an individual text. Um, so yeah, it depends how you're measuring it. Um, they're both great because there are some people you will not get to, they will, will not answer their phones and will, but will look at a text. And there's some people who ne never like use texts, but will own, will answer their phones. So we need an all of the above strategy for sure. Uh, Rika says, what's the most efficient way to tap into FT6 texting opportunities? There are different answers in this chat. Um, the, the, I'm going to answer that one. <laughs> the, the best way to, is to go to our website under the actions menu item at the top. There's a pull down and you can go to volunteer ops. That's where you find them all. And we update those on a regular basis. If you're on the uh, newsletter, it's also in the newsletter, but you can always go to the website for whatever's the latest news on, on volunteer ops for both phone and text banking. All right, here's, here's one. Um, Lori says, what are the concerns that vote by mail in some states like P Pennsylvania may lead to massive voters ballots being nullified for not completing it in for not completing it correctly by not putting in the secure envelope, signatures different, et cetera. How are you taking this into account when putting info out? Mm -hmm. So we, you know, compose uh, each state specific follow-up email individually. So we can take these things into account and we can say, you know, Pennsylvania voters um, pay extra attention to your complicated ballot definitely put it in the sleeve before you mail it back or it won't be counted. It's a ridiculous rule, but yeah, that's, that's uh, we absolutely take things in like that into account and try to uh, try, try to find every, every detail like that, every little detail that really matters and get that to people. Um, also, if you hear of uh, some crazy detail, let us know you're on the ground in a swing state. Let us know, you know, that, that helps us out. Um, but yeah, we're always looking for that. Um, someone wrote in the chat, who does the follow-up emails? I wrote them all myself, actually. Uh, you know, it's a collaborative process and there are different, many different drafts, but like, um, but they don't just get sent out by a computer. There's a lot of love and, uh, and, and time that goes into each one. Um, and we, we have an amazing, uh, info team. Uh, we have an amazing script team and uh, a lot of people on our team have done some, some a really good detailed research that supports those efforts. Fandra wants to know where she can get those posters. Mm. I want to know that too. When I find out, you'll know for sure. That's a great question. I'm going to find out. Kevin says, per 538, Pennsylvania is the most likely state to be the tipping point, not Florida. I think this was not a question. This was a, this was a comment. Please focus on efforts in Pennsylvania. Maybe the question is, what are we doing in Pennsylvania? Um, phoning and texting and social media ads and emails. But yeah, um, I hear you. Um, the 12 target states we picked, they're all important. You know, um, some are more than others for sure. Um, but I would say that, you know, P Pennsylvania, I'm not, I'm not talking any trash about Pennsylvania. We absolutely are putting a, a you know, putting up a full throated effort in Pennsylvania um, and also in Florida because Obama won it twice by one point each time. Trump just won by one point in Florida and a lot has happened since then. So uh, since then, Andrew Gillum, lost his governor's race, gubernatorial race by about 35, under 35,000 votes. And just in tonight's headline, we saw that Bloomberg is registering 32,000 felons in Florida. So it's a super competitive state. Can't give up on Florida either. Helen asks, do you get money from ActBlue? Um, 
we give money to Act Blue. <laughs> Act Blue is, is the, the service that we use. Um, that's uh, it's a reputable service. It's very, uh, it, it has people fill out what they need to fill out uh, politically to meet FEC guidelines on the site. So you can just easily donate and not have to think too much about it, about you know whatever rules are involved because they take care of that. And in return for that, they take a small, uh, like two, two something percent of donations. Alejandro asks, can you add voter registration verification functionality to Voterizer? It would be a great tool when calling prospects. Mm -hmm. We can think about that. Right now we do that on the back end. Um, like I said, we confirm that people are registered and if there is any problem with their registration, we get in touch with them and have an automated follow-up email that lets them know and lets them which you know county registrar to get in contact with so they can figure it out. Um, but I know you mean on the spot verification. In general, um, we figure it takes about as much time to register, maybe a tiny bit more than it does to verify. So our philosophy is why not just get them registered? You know, um, that's what worked in the field. And, uh, and so, so that's, that's what we want to push people to do. If they register again, they, uh, there's a good chance it will be better than the first time they did it because our app encourages them to register to vote by mail. And that, you know, increases voting rates dramatically because it's so convenient. Joyce asks, how do, how do we learn how to use Voterizer? I actually think that's a, that is a great question. Um, you can go to test.voterizer.org. Somebody can put that in the chat. But Jeff, not to put you on the spot in front of 300 people, but I think we should put together a video that shows how that works. Jeff is putting a thumbs up. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, that's how things work around here. Yeah. Somebody suggests a thing, Jeff makes it happen. Yeah, in less time than you would believe. Um, <laughs> so here's what it looks like. You just go to, I went to test, but you just go to voterizer.org. It looks the same. It says this, register to vote, save the world from Trump, turning off all Republicans who, uh, you know, click command W in disgust. Um, all you do is pick your state. By the way, Mary, underneath that get started button is Espanol. So that was the, that was one of your questions. Can you reach the Espanol part right on this site? Yes, you can. You can go, you can send anybody to Voterizer and they can see that Espanol choice and it sends them right to the Spanish language version. Mm -hmm. And I think we've added more states in the last day. Um, here you can elige your estado and empezar or get started. Whoops, pick a state. Um, so it's super simple. I'm, I just started and I'm almost done. It's only three pages. Um, pick a state, takes you here. You can fill in your information. Say, I want to register to vote. Pick your party. I'm Democratic. Don't tell anybody. Um, this takes you to the third page where it says click here to complete your registration. This is the goodbye page and important information page. And when you click on that, it takes you to the state website. Man, I'm glad that worked, you know, would have been embarrassing. Um, fill this out and register online. And then when you close that, you're back at this final page where right up front lets you know, November 3rd and Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, the date of the next election and the people to vote for most important things. Also, Governor Hickenlooper, former Governor Hickenlooper for Senate. Um, Got to get that name recognition up there. And then there's this state specific uh, information here. So yeah, that's a quick tour. That's a lightning tour. Didn't realize I'd be doing that, but worth it. Good question. Donna says, have you contacted Bloomberg to see if he's willing to help financially? If you have his number, put it in the chat, please. <laughs> We have uh, tried. We've gotten Bloomberg adjacent, you know, um, not quite, you know, hit hit him broadsides, you know. So, so yeah. If anyone knows a way to contact him, let us know, and we would love to have a quick Zoom chat with him, you know. Um, 
the uh, change that he shakes out of his pants leg could fund us for a year. We are, uh, uh, I'm not lean, but Field Team Six is a lean organization and uh, we're, we're very proud of how far we, we stretch our money. So. Corey, as- Corey asks, do you require training for text banks? Oh, that was a snort, sorry. Uh, good question. Every event starts with its own training. So no prior experience is ever necessary at a Field Team Six event. Um, all text banks start with training. All phone banks start with training. Um, so you just have to show up. That's it. You don't even have to wear pants. Shirt, you probably, you know. In normal uh, times, just to be clear, you do. Just. Lori says, what steps is Field Team 6 doing to recruit people of color? That's a good question. Um, we are currently working with... Um, with Higher Heights for America. You know, we're super proud of that. Um, And uh, on peer-to-peer, I believe phone and text banks, phone and or text banks um, into our target states. We're also, um, the, the, you know, the next list that we're looking for is a uh, list of unregistered people of color specifically. Um, also we have, you know, in the, in the past year, we, we have, uh, put together, recruited a, a Latinx working group, um, and, um, very proud of that. And we have a youth outreach team and we are actively looking for black outreach organizers and LGBTQ plus outreach organizers. We have those position announcements on our website. Please apply. We could use your help. And we're, um, you know, that is a, that, that's a core part of what we're, what we're doing. Um, our, um, you know, we're also, as, as we hire, as we gain the ability to hire more people, uh, that is a top priority is hiring women, people of color, people from the LGBTQ community, um, people from the disabled community. Um, that's, that's, that's a core part of our mission, who we are. Greer asks, can you clarify the difference between text arcades and weekend text banking? Yes, I'm sorry, I just wanna go back for one second and also say that, that um, we have people of color on our, on our staff and uh, we have started doing that already. Um, and that's the direction we're, we're, we're going in from here on out. All right, sorry, say it one more time. <laughs> uh, can you clarify the difference between text arcades and weekend text banking? Yes. Um, if uh, anything that's not called a text arcade is a free texting opportunity for our volunteers. Um, and so we have those free uh, opportunities on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and we're looking at standing up more during the week as well. If it's called a text arcade, those are the ones where you uh, pay $10 for a digital token and that unlocks 500 names. And you know, you can, you can buy one token or more. You know, uh, we have extra names reserved so that people can unlock them with more tokens. And just to be totally clear again, this is not replacing any of the normal text banks we would have. This is not at all a money-making endeavor. This pays for itself and that's it. So we have them just to get us, for people who can uh, afford to, to pay for that, to get us further down the list than we would have otherwise. All right, I think it's time to take our last question here. Uh, and I think uh, Scott says it best when he says, what are the take home messages? Action items, please. Oh yeah. Mm. How's that for teeing it up? Beautiful. <laughs> There's 42 days left Whew, to do all the good we can. So we have plenty of volunteer opportunities. There are multiple phone banks every day into uh, multiple states. So I'm, I, I think every day there's multiple states going on. 
um, definitely multiple time slots for phone banks. There's text banks every week. And we can drop that link in the chat for the volunteer ops page, please, somebody. It's um, in the chat. Yes. Um, super volunteers. If you'd like to lead a phone bank or text bank, that is amazing. And we can train you up. It's not hard. Um, or you can help out as support staff for our text banks. There's a great need for that. For every one trainer that leads a text bank, we need two to four people on support. Um, we can train you up in that. And that's not hard. And that is hugely useful. Um, if you're an organization, partner with us. Contact Sarah at Field Team 6. She is our national outreach director. Maybe the most inspiring person I've ever met. Um, and, and let's join forces to save the world. That's as far as volunteering. Those are all the ways you can help. Um, as far as events, you can come to our fundraising events. That also helps us expand our, our capacity. We have a lot of great events coming up. We have one called Native Voices for Votes, which is an event we're co-hosting with the Great Plains Action Society, an indigenous-led society. And that is a, it's going to be a concert of indigenous musicians and artists from Iowa and Nebraska. I'm super excited about that. Um, we have, sorry, that, that is- That link Thursday. is in the chat, by the way. Okay. Um, that's on Thursday. On Saturday, we have um, a, a film called, a new documentary that's amazing. It's called The Third Act is for Activism. It is uh, it's, it's a super inspiring story of the women who were the inspiration behind Field Team 6. They, uh, they're almost all over 60. And uh, yeah, they were so good at voter registration that they, they earned the nickname SEAL Team 6. Um, this documentary was made by my wife. Um, it's amazing. It's amazing. I'd, I'd marry her all over again just for this. So you got to see that third act is for activism um, with Q and A with uh, April, my, the director, uh, April Lunston, and four of SEAL teams, the SEAL Team Six members. Afterwards, that's going to be wonderful. There's another Voices for Votes Blue Wave Rising on Sunday. That is a rock and roll tsunami. Uh, I think there are four, four or more different performers. Um, there is. All right, on, on Friday, October 2nd, last one I'll mention is called, are you ready to, to bleep me, Dale? Oh, uh, this is gonna go poorly. It's called yep. the beep show. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a, it's a hilarious musical comedy variety show uh, with lots of original songs. So, and a lot of guest uh, appearances. So that should be great. Um, if you have an idea for a fundraiser you'd like to throw or help us throw in the weeks after the election, you can help us become an evergreen organization uh, and, because we don't stop. So for that, contact Kala at events at Field Team 6. Um, if you'd like to give more, you can contact Yvette at fieldteam6.org. So last thing I want to say. Um, because this is the last time I'm gonna to get to see all of you. Well, I might see you at phone or text banks or at events, but some of you, it's gonna be the last time until the election. This is a dark time. Um, but, but when you're trying to digest the latest indigestible news item, remember four years ago in the run up to 2016, Remember what didn't exist. There was no indivisible at all. There was no swing left. There was no women's march, which was about to become the biggest protest in American history. Katie Porter was teaching law. AOC was a bartender. I was writing the Sharktacular Shark Week preview special at this time. <laughs> and hundreds of thousands of activists of us were just living our, our normal lives and we, we had yet to be galvanized. So since then, we've all changed our lives in... <laughs> in, in, in ways big and small. So many of my friends have changed their entire lives 
So many of us have changed our lives so that we can do activism as a hobby or, or even just, you know, a couple hours on a, a, a weekend, but that it wasn't there before. So many people have come to me and said, oh, I'm so jealous, I, you know, that you got to do that. I wish I could give my entire life to be an activist. That's an insane thing to say. So many people have said that. Um, and, and, and what we did is it formed a resistance. You won't hear about it on the news, but it's real. And we know because we flipped the house in 2018. No one knew if we could do that. We needed 23 seats. We got 40. We got the most women elected in any congressional class ever. We got the first two Native American women elected to Congress. It was the most Democrats swept in <laughs> since just after Watergate. And every data point we have even since then shows that we are making progress. In 2019, we put a Democrat in the Kentucky governor's mansion and we flipped Virginia, capital of the Confederacy. We flipped it union blue, it's our state now. Um, and, and we're not stopping. So, uh, you know, Black Lives Matter filled the streets of every state capital, breaking the record set by the Women's March and becoming the new biggest protest in history something between 14 and 26 million people have participated. If that's not a sign of change coming, I don't know what is. So in 42 days, we're about to expand the House majority. We're about to flip the Senate and we're about to take back the White House and our democracy for science, for love, for sanity, for the environment, for our children, for our, our, our parents and grandparents. And, uh, we're going to look back on this moment for the rest of our lives. And uh, let's, let's be able to say we left it all in the field. You know, we worked, we reached out of our bubbles. We built so much more than any single electoral victory. We built us, we built a resistance and we built a movement that has to, it has to keep going and let this election in 42 days be, not, it's, it's, it's the end of the first chapter, but let it be the beginning. Really, really, really. So rude. Hey, it's you. It's you. Oh my God. And with that, <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think we, I think we're fired up, dog. Uh, that's what, that's what Amy said. I'm still, I'm still in that. I just want to, so it's time now. It's time to push hard, as hard as we possibly can. Get in there. Do everything you can. And it's also time to be extra understanding of ourselves of our loved ones, anyone who, who we contact, you know, everyone's fighting a super tough battle right now. None tougher than the battle my dogs are fighting with each other. Um, and in 42 days, it's time to win. Let's do it. We can, we're going to. Let's do it. Thank you everybody for coming. There will be a recording of this event if you missed any part of it or you'd like to see any part of it again. And uh, of course, if you have any questions that we didn't get to today, please feel free to send them to info at fieldteam6.org. Love you all. Good night. <laughs>